Grading essays can be one of the most time-consuming things you do as a teacher. Now, let's say that you're teaching in secondary school, you have 150 students, and you're spending about 10 minutes per essay. Well, that all adds up. Now, we do still grade these essays because the feedback that you give is so important. It has to be high-quality feedback, actionable, and obviously relevant to that student and their submission. Well, today we're looking at a tool, CoGrader AI, which is going to let you speed up that workflow. It's going to help you grade those essays. You can then manually go in, tweak a few things, and send it out to your students. Not only are you grading faster, but you're going to create a very high quality feedback based on your prompt and your assignment instructions. Now I wanna say a quick thank you to CoGrader for sponsoring this video, allowing me to highlight and demo all the premium features as well as what's available to anyone accessing this program. Now let's go ahead and log into CoGrader and see what it has to offer and how it can help us speed up our workflow. Now I'm going to click on login and I'm going to select CoGrader 1.0. This is the full version of CoGrader. Now they have just recently released CoGrader 2.0. This is still in beta, so let's have a look at the 1.0 version first. Now here, when I'm inside CoGrader and I'm logged in, the first thing you'll see is all the classes that you've already set up. If you wanted to create a new class, you would click on create class and then fill in the information. For example, we can have the flipped school and then we have a maths class. We're going to click on create and this automatically creates that class. Within that class, you can then start adding assignments and your submissions. Now, if you do not want to manually create your classes, you can always import these from Google Classroom. So if you are a Google Classroom user, Find the timestamps below because I will also show you how you can import your class via Google Classroom. For now, let's do it manually and let's open up our flipped school computing class. We're going to create our first assignment. The first assignment will be who was Ada Lovelace. Now we've just done an entire unit on the history of computing and we've discussed Ada Lovelace. And now I want my students to write an essay about Ada Lovelace. So we're going to create that assignment. The instructions, these are the instructions that will be shared with the students, but also the instructions that CoGrader will use to then grade the submissions. So we're going to pop the instructions in there. As you can see, I would like them to write an essay to explore the life and contributions of Ada Lovelace. It has to be between 100 and 500 words. Answer the following questions. Who was Ada Lovelace? What were her significant contributions? How did her collaboration with Charles Babbage influence her work? And in what ways is her work still relevant today? The requirements of this assignment are that they have to use at least two credible sources. They have to cite using the APA format. They have to organize it in a introduction, body with paragraphs and a conclusion. And their writing has to be clear, concise and free from grammatical errors. So this is the instruction shared with both the student and co-grader. That's the same instruction. That way co-grader knows exactly what to look for in those submissions. I'm going to click on next and it now allows me to either create a rubric based on the instructions using AI or find one from the rubric library. So when you see here, we have a rubric library with lots of generated rubrics. However, I'm going to create a new rubric using AI. So let's go ahead and click on that. We can give this a name. So I'm going to call this the historical person in computing rubric. There we go. And then we are going to have levels or points. We can select levels and an AI generated rubric. So let's go ahead and generate this rubric. It is now going to automatically go to the assignment instructions, read those and generate a rubric. Okay, so let's scroll down and see what is generated. The first one, essay should accurately describe Ada Lovelace's background, key achievements and impacts. Then we have different levels, excellent, 10 points. The essay provides a comprehensive. Yeah, then we have good, satisfactory, needs improvement. Second criteria, use of sources. Essay should have two credible sources. Excellent if it has used more than two. Good if it has used two. Then we have satisfactory needs improvement. Third criterion, the organization of the actual text. Let's see, we have a 10, 8, 6, and 4. 
Criterion 4, the writing quality, clear, concise, and free from errors. There we go. Now we can add our own manually, or we can go in and tweak all these different criterions. If you're happy with this, you can leave it as it is and click on next. Now we have to let CoGrader know our feedback style. So it's going to feedback to the students, gives a certain style, but we can still tweak that afterwards. So it is a comprehensive feedback style. So you can see it gives you an example here with a glow, grow, action items and an overview. It also has an essential style, which just shows you the glow, grow, action, very short or minimal, where it is a single paragraph feedback. I'm going to leave the comprehensive feedback. I want them to really dive into it because this is the very first essay that they will submit within this flipped school classroom. So I'll leave it to comprehensive. Then the scores, do you want them to be visible? Well, I do want to show the scores. This is, you know, a summative assessment so we can show everyone those scores or we can hide the scores and keep it as a formative assessment. I'm going to show the scores. And then we can have some additional instructions. This is really powerful. So let's say that you have multilingual students. Here you can add in that you would like to have multiple languages in your feedback. Maybe you want to give the feedback in both English and Spanish, English and another language. You can also say, okay, this is the very first essay of the year. Don't be too harsh. Be kind. Let's make sure that they are not put off. That this is an advanced way of really tweaking your feedback and making it fit your classroom and this specific assignment. For now, I'm going to leave it blank and I'm going to see what it comes up without those additional instructions. So let's go ahead and click on Save Assignment. And here we have our assignment. You can see at the top the overview of what the instructions were, how many submissions have been graded, the average scores, median score, and the submissions approved. So now it's time to get our submissions into CoGrader. Now at the bottom, you'll see there's a number of options. We can either import the files manually, import these from a CSV file. We can add the submissions manually, or we can connect to Canvas or Schoolology to get that into our CoGrader platform. I'm going to add the files manually. So I'm going to import files and let's upload the files. They are here, click on open. Those files are uploaded into this system. There we go. All the files have been uploaded. We can click on done, click to close. And what you'll see here at the bottom is they start grading these essays. So we have Emma Johnson's. Hers has been graded. She's got 40 out of 40 as a grade. Then we've got Jack Stevenson. He's got 26 out of 40, 26, 28, 38 and 24. If you remember, we did use a rubric for this. At the top, we immediately see how many have been graded, what the average score was, the median score. And now we can go in and we can manually review these. So let's go ahead and open the first, Emma Johnson. On the right hand side, you see Emma Johnson's submission. There we go. On the left, we can see the feedback. This is where we can now tweak this, change the feedback if we feel that that is necessary and then push it out. So let's go ahead. Your essay is comprehensive, well-researched, well-organized. It describes her life glow. You provided a comprehensive, accurate account of Ada Lovelace's life. And you can see also the grade overview here. So it's used our rubric that was AI generated, if you remember. You have some action items here. So can you add more detail about Ada Lovelace's early life and education? Maybe include some more direct quotes, or specific information from the sources. And then we see how it was graded. Let's say that I want to change this and I don't think that the organization is as good as it could be. I can either ask AI to regrade this, simplify the feedback, change it to a friendlier tone, include more examples or edit this manually. I'm going to include more examples of the organization. It's going to regrade that section, rewrite it. There we go. It's included some more examples and now I'm going to edit it manually. And I'm going to change the points to nine because it is still a little bit scattered. There we go. Okay, now that I'm happy with this, I can see my word count here. I'm going to approve this and move on to the next. So approve and next. This is our next one. As you can see, a very short essay, not really well organized, no sources cited. So let's see if our AI co-grader has picked up on this. You can see it's a basic overview. 
action items, more specific details, what was the background and influence, include citations and bibliography in APA format. So it did find that. Content is a 6 out of 10, it's not too harsh. Use of sources of 4, definitely needs improvement. Organization, 8 out of 10, I think this is very, very generous, so let's reduce that to a 6. Uh, let's make it a satisfactory. Save that. You can see it's automatically changed that for us. And then the writing quality, that was okay. Approve and next. Another short essay. You can see it's again picked up on that. It looked at the assignment requirements. We can approve, click next, approve, next, and approve, next. So now that we've approved all these, you can see that we can, in our dashboard, see the grades, how they were approved. We can either regrade these if we disagree with it, or we can view the grade review here and then go back into the main overview. Now, it's taken the student's name from the file name. So here you can see it still says who was Ada Lovelace. I can always click on the three dots, edit the student name, and simply have Emma Johnson as the name rather than that full file. For this example, I'm going to leave it as it is. We can also get some insights into our classroom and into this assignment. So let's click on Get Insights. Now AI is going to read through everything and it's going to give me an overview of my entire class. So what are some of the overall class assignment feedback? What are some positive points and what are some general common improvement points for this assignment? So this is really helpful for you as a teacher to then tweak your teaching, your planning, to really try and help them create even better essays the next time around. So here you can see include more detailed information was a general issue. Um, the credible sourcing, so maybe we have to revisit how to cite your sources in APA format. Um, the transition between paragraphs for that better flow, that's something that maybe we can work on with the English department. So it's not just the students getting feedback, you as a teacher are also getting feedback about the assignment. So this is the manual workflow. We can then export this feedback. You can see we can export it as PDFs, HTML files, CSS files, or we can print this feedback. So let's have a look at the PDF export. We can click on the export as a PDF. And here, each of our students has been given a PDF file with the feedback. So you can see it gets the glow grow at the top and then the entire feedback has been printed for them. Now let's have a look at connecting this to a Google Classroom. So here I have a demo class. This is a geography year seven class. Now you can see I have a number of assignments already prepared on Google Classroom. So let's go ahead and import our Google Classroom. We're going to click on import from Google Classroom. It's going to create that link. I'm then going to select my geography year seven class. There should be one assignment in there with four students that have already submitted some work. So I can select the assignment. Let's select assignment three, the case study of a mega city. We're going to click on import. It's going to import all those submissions from those students. It's going to import the instructions and it's going to let me go through those steps. So here you can see, I wanted them to create a report, choosing a mega city, in-depth research on growth, challenges and opportunities. Let's click on next. Do we want to use a rubric for this one? We can either create a new rubric or select from the library. So we're going to create one ourselves. For this one, we're going to use points. And we're going to call this Mega City Review. It is going to be AI generated. So let's go ahead and create that rubric. Okay, we're going to check it all. So content and research, organization structure, analyzing, grammar, spelling, presentation. Excellent. We're going to go to next. Do we want it to be comprehensive, essential, minimal, show scores, or do not show scores? We're going to leave it to comprehensive, leave it to show scores, and we are going to import all the submissions. Once I've clicked it on import, it's going to import the assignments, the submissions from my students on Google Classroom, and it's going to bring them into CoGrader, run the analysis of the assignments, and give feedback, and then it's going to show me the documents for review. So I'm going to click on start reviewing. The first one, let's have a look. This was my first submission. Okay, so you can see this was the first submission. It was graded as a 47 out of 90, which is not that good. You can see that it says the report covers basic aspects. It should definitely have a bit more in 
they should definitely have more content. Excellent, we can approve and click on next. Another one, this was also not a very good one. As you can see here, it says history, London is old. Well, we all know London is old, so that is not good enough for in a submission. Approve and next, and I'm going to rush through these. Now, you would obviously take your time. You would read these carefully. Now I'm in my assignment dashboard. I can get some insights. So click on get insights. This is the insights of my entire class. Okay, there are some common positive points and there's definitely a lack of depth and detailed analysis, inconsistent formatting, simplistic presentation. It lacks critical insights and potential solutions to identify problems. So those are all things that we can then work on as a class. Now, in order to export this, I can send this back to Google Classroom because remember, we've created that link between the two. So let's go ahead and click on Send to Google Classroom. Export to Google Docs. It is now exporting this feedback to Google Docs. So let's go ahead and give it the permissions it needs. And there we go. It has all been submitted. Let's see what this looks like on Google Classroom. We're going to open our Google Classroom. So now on Google Classroom, I can see all my assignments there. I can open them. And here you can see all the feedback has been copied into their original assignments. Scrolling down, you will see that it even adds in that rubric. Do note that once you have graded them on CoGrader and exported to Google Classroom, if you then regrade them on CoGrader and export it again, it is going to copy this on top of the already copied in content. So if you regrade multiple times and then export multiple times, you will end up with multiple blocks of feedback. So do make sure that your feedback looks the way you want it to look in CoGrader before exporting it back into Google Classroom. Another thing to note is that the marks are not automatically transferred over. So here on the right hand side, you'll still have to manually add in your grades or marks on Google Classroom from CoGrader. Hopefully this is something they'll look at in the future. Now, one other neat little feature of CoGrader is that they have this training tab on the left. This is where you can get some certifications to really show that you understand the program. This is a type of onboarding. So if you are using CoGrader, I would suggest you go through these three different certifications to really understand what the software can do, what it can do for you in the classroom, and then simply keep these badges as a way of demonstrating that you understand the software you're using. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel and check out the links in the description below. I also want to say a quick thank you to CoGrader for sponsoring this video and giving me access to their platform, the full platform, so I can show everyone what CoGrader can do for you in the classroom. In addition to that, I would also like to thank all our Patreon supporters and channel members for making it possible for me to create new content each and every week. Patreon is where you go to have everything ad-free and additional files. Channel members get access to everything before the public release. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.